All right, well, welcome to our third installment of the chapter one videos. This is lesson 1.3, points, lines, and planes. So our goal today is to use postulates and undefined terms. And what we find is we have to do this very early on in geometry because there are, these are going to be our building blocks for what we work on, how we're going to name what we're studying in geometry. And I know it sounds weird, an undefined term. Um, I think like the vocabulary that you do in all of your classes, they all have definitions. And so these are not necessarily going to be definitions, but they're going to be more of an explanation of what each of those terms are. Um, there is quite a bit of vocabulary if you look at your sheet. And so what I did is I broke it up into three words per chunk. And so I recommend listening to the explanation, pausing, and then writing down what I have up there um, for each word, or wait till I'm done with the full screen of three um, words and then pause the video. So this one may take a little bit longer than the recorded time. Um, but what we have here is we're going to start by defining for you what an undefined term is. So it's a word such as a point, line or plane. And those are our three basic undefined terms in geometry that is not mathematically defined using other known words. Um, you know, if I think back to algebra, we had variable ex expressions, which are expressions that are combinations of variables, numbers, and math symbols. We had definition, mathematically terms describing that, but point, line, and plane do not have mathematical words. We basically are going to tell you how they're used. Um, and so they're considered undefined terms, but there's this common understanding of what all of these words mean. So as we go through today's lesson, you're going to learn what we mean by a point, what we mean by a line, and what we mean by a plane, and be able to identify all three of those things. So our first undefined um, term is point. Um, a point has no dimension, and we're going to see... Um, uh, we're going to have a look at one dimension, two dimension. Um, later on in geometry, we'll say three dimensions. Um, but a point has no dimension. Um, and we're going to represent a point simply by a small dot. But then what we're going to do now is we're going to start building off of these small dots to create the rest of our terms. And then our last term for this slide um, is line. So that's our second undefined term for this lesson. And a line has one dimension. It's one dimension. It extends without end. So it keeps going in both directions. Um, and it's represented by a line with two arrowheads. And it's going to be really important. And so we talk about this. You've seen this because you have graph lines. And this is what we mean by a line. This is what we mean by a point. Now, later on, we're going to show you how to name these because we don't just say, oh, there's point, there's line. We're going to have specific names that we give them. But this is what it means by arrowheads to show that it continues to extend without end. Um, like I said, this would be a good place to pause, copy down the terminology. Um, but I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, our next term is a plane. A plane now has two dimensions. So the um, line that we just looked at was just going left or right. It was either going up or down. There was just one direction where a plane has two dimensions. So it's going to go left and right, and it's going to go up and down. Um, we're going to often see it when it's represented by something that looks like a floor. So we often, um, in classes, we talk about um, planes. We refer to the floor as being a plane um, because it spreads length and width. Or a wall is a good example of a plane. A piece of paper, something that has length and width. That's what we mean by two dimensions. Um, and we have to imagine that it continues to extend without end. Um, that's what makes it difficult sometimes is because we're using paper, um, which is measurable dimensions. We're using floors. But a plane keeps going on and on in both directions. All right, now we have postulates, because that was one of our goals, was to use these postulates in undefined terms. And so a postulate is a statement that is accepted without further justification. Um, mathematics is always about proving things, and that's what I always loved about math, is it could be proven. Um, but postulates are things that we can't prove. We have just decided as a mathematical community that there's enough evidence out there that it's true, we just can't prove it. And so there's... Building on what we did in Lesson 1.2, we're not finding counterexamples to these postulates. 
um, but we're not proving them in the way that we'll prove things um, later on in geometry that I did in many of my college math classes. And then the last point, uh, last vocab for this slide are collinear points. Um, co means together. If we think of that term from an English class, this word co means together. I um, lived in a co-ed dorm in my freshman year, and co-ed met boys and girls together. So these are going to be points that are together on a line, collinear points. So they're going to be points that lie in the same line. Um, we can have an infinite number of collinear points because these little points are what make up a line. But co means together, together on the line. Um, our next word is coplanar point. So once again, we're going to build off that same prefix of co, and so these are together on a plane. So these are points that lie on the same plane. So now we're going to be looking at this wall or the or a floor um, symbolically on our paper and looking for ones that are on the same plane. And then coplanar lines. Uh, we're building off of, like we said, these undefined terms. We see line and plane in here. So we have this undefined line. Um, line on the same plane. So we're looking for lines that will line on the same plane. And then segments and endpoints. Um, a segment is part of a line. Um, I believe I grew up in my geometry classes calling them line segments. You may hear me refer to that in class. Um, but line segments. A segment is part of a line that consists of two points that are called the end points, meaning that they're end points. These segments have a beginning and an end. So we have a start and finish. We can see the beginning. So any sort of race would be considered a segment because you have the beginning of the race to the end of the race. Um, so a segment is part of a line that consists of two points called the end points and all the points that are between those two endpoints. So once again, because it's part of a line, there's an infinite number of points there, but we are going to section off part of the line with these two endpoints and narrow in. Um, that's what allows us to take measurements. The only way we can measure something is to be measuring a line segment because it has a stop and a start. And then our last definition is array. Um, and they kind of um, define array using some words, but it's array A, B. And what we'll see, and we'll look at some of this as our vocabulary and our notation in this lesson. But array is a combination of a segment and a line. So it has part of the definition of a segment. It has an endpoint, but then it has the arrowhead of a line so it can continue going in one direction. So this segment, this ray, written this way, has the end point of A because there's the stopping point above A. And all the points that lie on the line AB, but they're on the same side of A as B. So I'm going to start at A, I'm going to find where B is at, and I'm going to travel in that direction. That's what it means to find ray AB. Okay, so we're going to take a look at how do we use these lines, how do we use these points, and how do we start naming things. That's really what this is about, about being able to look at a picture and name points, name lines, name planes, name segments, name rays. We need to be able to build that foundation now early on in geometry so that we can continue to use that because we're these undefined terms, these postulates are the building blocks of what we have in geometry. All right, so postulate um, number one. This is the first postulate. Now, what I found over the years teaching in two different geometry series is that postulate one is not the same in every book. This is just our first postulate. So postulate number one, um, two points determine a line. In order to have a line, I have to have two points. So we're saying through any two points, there is exactly one line. Okay, so if I give you two points, we will all draw the same line. What that means is symbols is over here, line N, and it's 
written with that lowercase n, so that's one way of naming a line, is with this lowercase letter, passes through the points P and Q. So we see that we name it as line N. The other way we can name a line, and we get to this a little, a little bit later on, but I want to point it out to you now, is taking the points on that line, writing them together. So we have line PQ, and then we draw the symbol with the two arrowheads. That tells me I'm going to the right of Q, and I'm going to the left of P. Depending on what direction you um, look at it, we could write our line, line QP, okay? But as long as I show that I'm going past P, past Q with those two arrowheads, I'm naming the same line. So line symbol PQ is one way to name the line. Line symbol and then QP, and then the other way is just with that italics lowercase n. So this is postulate number one, that if I'm going to name a line, I have to have two points. And that if I'm given two points, exactly one line, one distinct line can be drawn through those. Um, postulate number two, three points determine a plane. So through any three non-collinear points, there's exactly one plane. The reason that it takes three points is that if I only had two, I would just be drawing a straight line. Once I have three points that are not all in the same line, I have to make a box around them to contain them, and that's what creates this plane. So if we take a look at this, we have plane T, and plane T is written in a capital letter now, this italics, and we put it in this lower corner of the symbol. So notice, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we meant by it looks like a wall. For a floor, we have these sides here. It, um, those of you who remember some stuff from your um, geometry um, units in middle school, that's what we call parallelogram. But we're putting four sides on our plane. And so plane T passes through the points A, B, and C. Um, they're not collinear because there's no way I can make one straight line that contains all of those. I can connect C and B, but in order to get A, I'd have to make a turn, and that's not a straight line. Once we put the curve in there, it's no longer a straight line. I could connect A and B, but the same thing, I'd have to curve to come back and get C, and that's not a straight line. All right, so because they're non-collinear, I can't connect them all with one point. I just lost my points by erasing them. All right, because they're non-collinear, they create that plane. So that's our um, second postulate, that if you have three non-collinear points, you know you've just created a plane. All right, so let's take a look at example one. What we want to be able to do is look at a diagram and start naming points, lines, and planes. So we're going to use this diagram at the right to name three points two lines, and two planes. So I'm looking for three dots. That's kind of what we think this has. I'm looking for two lines. You guys already know what a line looks like. And we say a plane, I'm kind of looking for two rectangles on there. So if we can get those definitions, those visual definitions for those, we should be able to find them. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, there are going to be many, um, can, there are times where there can be many answers for these. Um, but if we take a look, um, we need three points. So we're looking for three things, three dots. And so if we look, I can see one, two, three dots. These other letters that are on here, those are being used to name something. There's no dot to go with them. So for loop for A, our solutions are D, E, and F are three points. For part B, it says to name two lines. So I'm going to look on here for two lines. Um, now, if you remember back, we named lines using two points or a um, lowercase italics letter. So if I look for my lines, Right here is one of my lines, and here is my other line. As soon as I highlight those, it jumps out to me that there is a lowercase m and a lowercase p. So for my two lines, I could say I have line p 
And um, now I do want to add in here, they don't leave us space for it, but I do want to point something out to you. Ladies and gentlemen, M can, is the only way to name this line. There's no dots on that line. So if I were to have a second answer, I'd have to keep the M in there. But I want us to look closely at line P. Line P, they have shown us two of the points on that line, line D and line E. So I can also name that line using two points and the arrowhead. The note-taking guide is setting you up just to use those italics, lowercase letters. And for most of what we do that's um, in this lesson, that's what you'll be looking for. But realize, if your eyes caught those two points and we're going to use that method, that's also a valid answer. I can't do it for line M because there's no points on the line. Um, now I'm looking for two planes. Those are the rectangular shapes. So I'm going to focus in on... Let me get rid of some of this. I'm going to focus in on my rectangles, so we're going to do one at a time. And when I look, I'm looking at the corners, and I notice that we do have a plain R right here. So we have R. And when I look for another plane, I've got... Oops. I've got this plane right here, and in the corner, I have the cube. So we have plane R and plane Q. So that's what we're going to go through. That's our thought process. Should this go a lot faster than this slide just went? By far. I just want to make sure that we're clarifying what we're looking for. So now what we want to do are name collinear and coplanar points. Remember this um, prefix co means together. So we're looking for things that are on the same line and same plane. So for letter A, name three points that are collinear. So I'm looking for my dots. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm looking for three that are in the same line. So my lines are right here. I've got this line and this line. Which of those lines has three distinct points on them, the dots on the line? Well, that's going to be our horizontal one that I can look at. So three collinear points would be D, E, and F. H and E are collinear. But there's not a third point on that line, so we can't use those as the beginning part of our collinear points. We now need to name four points that are coplanar. So, follow our handy highlighter and highlight the plane. The plane that they have defined for us is this plane right here. And so I'm looking for points on that plane. What we need to realize, ladies and gentlemen, is geometry is trying to take a three-dimensional um, aspect and squash it down flat on your paper. And so what we have here is we have a piece of paper that has an arrow, a line, going through it. So this H is not actually on our piece of paper. It's cutting through it. So when we talk about coplanar points, we're looking at D. E and F. If they're collinear, they're going to be coplanar. And then we have this letter G that's flat down. H is the one that's off the paper. So points D, E, F, oh, I'm supposed to name three or four, and G. I'm leaving you guys hanging there. Are on the same plane. So they are what we call coplanar. And now what it wants us to find is three points that are not collinear. And so what I find on this problem is I have students that really struggle with it because of that definition. It doesn't need to be three points that are not on um, any line. You can have two points that are on the same line and then a point that is off of it. Um, so if I take a look, I've got H, E, and G. H and E are collinear. But the third point I picked is not. So I could say H, 
E and G do not all lie on the same line. I could have said D, E, and H. I picked two collinear points and then one that was not on there. So we could have had D, E, and H. This is an infinite number of possibilities. We could have done something along this line and said, I'm going to pick D, or I'm going to pick H. I'm going to pick G, and I'm going to pick F. There's no line in that diagram going through all three of those. So I'm going to pick H, G, and F. You just need to find one point in order to call them non-collinear that's off of the line. So two of them can be on the same line. Pick one that's off of it. Or we can see from this last example in blue that all three of them can be off um, of different lines in our example in our diagram but it says here there are many correct answers to these all right so here's our checkpoints i'm going to do checkpoints a little bit different um, for this lesson uh, based on what i saw in class um, i want to give you guys the answers to the checkpoints but i would highly recommend that you try and do these on your own um, some of you may take the easy way out and just talk my answers but what these checkpoints do is they let you know, did I just understand the previous two examples? What I want to do is give you the answers so that you're then not stuck struggling. Did I really understand this? Am I doing this right? And so that we can come into class and instead of me to write down the answers for the checkpoints, we can start having some conversations. So like I said, right now would be a good time to pause, work out these six problems and then start it back up. But I'm going to start looking at this diagram and naming um, two lines. I need to name two lines um, on here. Just lost my um, highlighter, so I'm going to get that back. So I apologize for having to do that in the middle of the video. But if I look at my line, I've got one, two, three lines. So it says to name two lines. So we have line N, which is the only way to name that line. I have line P, because that's the only way to name that line. If you look at line N, it only had one point on it, point A. But as we defined a line, we'd have to have two points. Line P, they haven't defined any points for us. There's an infinite number of points. They just haven't defined any of them for us. So I can't start using that. Um, in the name. But if we look at line M, this is another line. But we also can name it using the points on the line. So I could use a whole lot of combinations, and I kind of want to go through this. We could use the double arrowhead and CD, because C and D are on the same line. I could use um, the double arrowhead and say C and E because those are on the same line. I could also use D and E with the double arrowhead, and that's the same line. But what we need to keep in mind is that all of these are simply naming one line. So if I were to ask you to name two lines, you could use any one in this highlighted section, but then you would also have to pick from N or P because we want two distinct lines. Um, all right, we need to name two planes. We're going to name uh, our planes using the letters, so we're looking for those boxes, we're looking for those rectangles, the floors, the walls, whatever we want to define those at. So there's one of our rectangles. Here's my other one. I'm looking for the letters in the corner, capital S, capital T. Name three points that are collinear. So I'm looking at my lines, and we kind of discussed this um, when we did problem number one. There's only one line in A, or one point named on line um, N. There's no points named on line P. So line M is my last chance for finding collinear points. So three points that are collinear, the only ones that will work here are C, D, and E. Now it says name three points that are not collinear. So this is where we start having a few more examples that we can pick from. 
So I'm just going to name a few for you. I can start with A. There's no other uh, point on that line. So I can start picking anything else. I can pick A, B, and C. I could also, once again, start with A. But I could choose C and D this time. Even though C and D are collinear, as soon as I throw in that third point that is not on the same line as C and D, it is non-collinear. And we could do the same thing with B. We could pick B and then pick a point that is not on uh, that is not on a line with it, so I could pick D and E. Because D and E are collinear, B is not, even though two of the three are, that B makes those non-collinear points. Um, name four points that are coplanar. We're going back and looking at these planes. Um, this vertical plane T only has one point labeled on it, so obviously I'm not going to get four coplanar points from that. So now I'm, um, I'm left with looking at uh, plane S. And the points that are coplanar on there are these labeled points, those dots. And so B, C, D, and E are coplanar. And then name two lines that are coplanar. There are two possible answers for this one. So let's focus on um, the top plane, plane T. If I look at plane T, is there a line on there? Yep, we have line N. Line N was on line was on plane T. What other line did I highlight? Well, this P kind of makes the corner of it, so P is also on there. So N and P are two sets of coplanar points. There's no other line or coplanar lines. I'm sorry, and there's no other lines on plane T that have been defined for us. So that's the only answer that we could give there. Now what we need to do though is we need to check and see would plane S give us any answers. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, some of these, it's going to be difficult to exhaust them. And what I mean by it is to give all the possible answers. I'm expecting you to do this. Simply name two lines that are coplanar, and then you can be done. But what I need to do here during the notes is to make sure that I'm looking at it from multiple perspectives because I need to try and cover how all of you are going to be looking at this diagram. So some of you are going to focus in on this plain S, and I need to name two lines that are coplanar. So if I take a look at this, right in the middle of plane S stands out line N. But the same thing, this boundary that we've had that we've drawn in of line P gives us another set of coplanar points. So if you were doing these on your own, you did what I asked you to, pause it and answer it. I only need one of these two answers, but both of these pairs would be examples of two lines that are coplanar. All right, so here's our follow-up, and I have to laugh because to me it really doesn't seem like a follow-up. This is kind of like a lead-in, a, a prelude to it, so we're going to do this together. The word is line. The symbols are points named in capital letters and then the arrows for that. So what would it look like in a diagram? We're going to have the arrowhead line, two points drawn on there, and then capital A and capital B. Um, because the arrow is going in uh, two directions, I don't have to draw two different pictures. I can read it from left to right because the line is traveling all the way to the right. I can only read it from right to left because it's traveling all the way to the um, left also. Um, segment AB or BA. It's a segment, which if we look at the definition of segment, meant there had to be endpoints. So there's no arrows in this symbol. So you're going to see distinct dots. Um, we're going to draw the segment, draw a straight line between them, but we've cut it off. And our A and B are going to be at those endpoints. So it's almost like what we've done is we've taken this segment here. And what we're going to do is erase. Oh, but then I don't want to do it. Oh, let's see. This is hard. Oh, no, that's not what I'm going to do. Undo. Sorry, guys. Undo. Undo. 
All right. It's like I'm taking the line and I'm simply erasing everything outside of A and B. So to focus in on a segment, I'm taking a line, or to create segment AB, I'm taking a line and cutting off everything outside of it. And that creates the diagram of what AB should be. Um, to have a ray, we're still just using these two letters, A and B. But if you notice, one of them has an endpoint at A. So we have an endpoint here. There's no arrow, which means our segment or our ray starts at A. We have the endpoint, and it travels towards B, and the arrow is over B, so it keeps going past B. When we look at ray BA, we're still going to take this idea of using this line AB. But now our endpoint is at B. And we're going to go keep traveling past A. So we can take one thing, a line, and we can focus on the segment. We can create a ray, or we can create a different ray traveling in different directions, all from the same one. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, even though A is coming first when we read the diagram, A, B, my name for rays always comes with the endpoint. And then the arrow. That is how we name a ray. You're going to name it with the endpoint letter first and then the arrowhead letter second. All right, so example three, we're going to draw lines, segments, and rays. So we want you to draw three noncollinear points, JKL, and then create line JK, segment KL, and um, ray LJ. So they need to be three noncollinear points. So I need to create three points, J, K, and then I'm going to put L somewhere over here. Um, notice I can make connect L and K. I connect J, I could connect J and K, or I could connect J and L, but um, because they are not all on a straight line, that's what makes them non-collinear. So let's take a look at what it tells us to do. It first says to draw a line, J, K. So I'm going to box that in in green so you can see my green line on here. I need to connect J and K, but I need to continue going past K and past J. So to draw a line JK, I'm taking those two points and going past them with the arrowheads. To draw segment KL, there's no arrows, which means there are endpoints. And I simply connect those endpoints. So what you see in your diagram, Liz, or in the name, is what you need to create in your diagram. If I need to draw ray LJ, the endpoint is above the L. The arrowhead is over here above the J. So I'm going to put an uh, uh, endpoint at L. I'm going to draw towards J. And then I'm going to put the arrowhead on because that ray keeps going. All right. So let's take a look at this follow up. Um, you start drawing an example three to complete the table. So I'm going to go split screen on us and see what we can have. So we're going to look at JK. Was it a line segment or ray? Well, because it has the two arrowheads that kept going in both directions, this is a line. How many arrowheads did we have to put on there in green? We had to put two. And then name the endpoints. Well, does this line ever stop? No. Does it have a starting point? No. So to name the endpoints, um, I'm just going to put, you would have to put N A for not applicable or none. There are no endpoints in a line. A line never ends. All right, if we look at um, uh, KL, there's no arrowheads on either side, which means there's two endpoints. There's a beginning and an end which makes that a segment. How many arrowheads are there? Zero. There are absolutely no arrows on that. And so how many endpoints are there? Or name any endpoints. There were two of them. 
and they were K and L. Um, the name of the segment will always give us the name of the endpoints. And then if we look at LJ, it has um, one endpoint and one arrow, which is our definition of a ray. How many arrowheads? It has one. And it means it had one endpoint, and that endpoint was L, because that was the letter that had the endpoint above it in the name. Uh, it's hard to see here in this split screen, um, but in your note-taking guide, you should see that J does have the arrow above it. So let's take a look at um, the checkpoint. Once again, I highly encourage you right now to hit pause. And then do your three problems and check them against my answers. Um, but what it tells us to do is to draw line A, B, and A, C. Are the lines the same? So I'm going to connect A and B with the line that's going to keep going. I'm going to connect A and C with the line, and I'm going to keep going. Now you look at that and you may say, are the lines the same? Well, no, because my green line goes past my blue line. Tisk, 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 ladies and gentlemen, remember your definition of line. A line is one dimensional and keeps going. That's what those arrowheads mean. So even though I stopped my blue line right here, I could have kept that going beyond, I kind of mocked my point A, but I could have kept going beyond that. So do those become the same line? Yes, they do. Because a, B, and C are collinear. All right, draw A, C, and B, D. Please make sure you're slowing down and reading these closely, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm not, you have to notice here that there's no arrowheads. So I'm drawing from, and I'm going to get a chance to erase here. Um, you guys might want to erase or get some pens in there. Um, different colored pens, but I'm going to draw in AC and it stops with arrows. And then I'm going to draw in BD. Are the segments the same? Well, you guys realize that. Visually, we can see that one's going horizontal. AC is horizontal, BD is vertical. But for our expl explanation, they're not the same because. They have different endpoints. All right, that's um, it. May be diff it's difficult to tell just from the name of lines if they're the same. I needed to see the visual for number seven. This one, number seven, had to be visual. I had to see it. But for eight, for those segments, all I needed were the names. As soon as those endpoints are not the same, we know they're not the same segment. So now it says to draw ray, because there's one endpoint and one arrow, CA and CB. So let's take a look at what we have there. I'm going to draw ray CA. So I'm going to start at C, and I'm going to draw towards A. And then I'm going to draw ray CB. I'm going to start at C and I'm going to go towards B. Well, I'm drawing an arrowhead, which means this blue one, draw in CB, we know that that arrow can keep going. So are the rays the same? Yes, they are the same. Why? We're going to go back to what happened earlier because A, B, and C are collinear and both rays Um, 
I'm going to use both arrows. are on the same side of C. Okay, they have the same endpoint and they're traveling in the same direction. Um, that's it for today's lecture. I'm hoping it helps um, having the checkpoint answers there for you. Um, have a wonderful evening and we'll see you in class.